Hi, I'm Lise Colucci, one of the life coaches at Queen Being. Today I'm talking to Abish again, who was a survivor discussing spiritual abuse and corporate abuse within her spiritual community. Today we went into more detail about something going on within the community that is affecting the way she feels as a survivor, as well as how that reflects to the greater community of all survivors. If that sounds good, hit subscribe and let's go. Hi, Abish. Hi, Lisa. Hi. Good. I'm happy to be talking with you more about um, the spiritual and corporate abuse that you went through and then where this is now going within the media and where it's going for yourself as somebody who's recovering and healing from this. So why don't you tell me a little bit about what is, what's going on? I realized that even though it is, my story is about me, mm -hmm. it's the only perspective that I have. And big picture, my story is us. Mm -hmm. And in being able to regain, a, a hopefully, a degree of my um, executive function and uh, dot connecting abilities, I can see how the marinade of the culture affects us in ways that we may not even be able to see. Mm -hmm very deeply for, for very, very long times. And I feel that it is uh, pervasive and that it is being perpetuated. However, I do also see that people are speaking up and standing out from what they have, <laughs> okay, I can only speak from my own experience, but from what I have worked so hard to protect myself from, mm -hmm in my mind, which is the truth that I, I, and not just me, because it is not just about me, it is us, have been abused in every possible way by this organization. Mm -hmm. and, and so what you were telling me though, is that they are in the middle of a media, Yes. rather, rather the media is exposing now that they are in, in the middle of a, of several different expo exposition. Yeah. And so what's going on with that? Just briefly, it's... Sure. It feels like it's, it is reaching a, a crisis point with the, the big leaders, the leaders of the corporation uh, choosing to, as I see it, ignore, give uh, the issues, the silent treatment, and then distract, you know, public media so that their followers have something to hold on to. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's a name change. You know, we're, we don't want to be called that anymore. It's a distraction and it's totally irrelevant from the actual issues which are at hand. They have, they have steadfastly refused to acknowledge the efforts that, um, that harmed members are making to make things right. They will not admit responsibility and they will not, they, I hate the us and them thing. It's the easiest way to talk about it. There's a lot of gray area, of course, in life, but it's, it's, an, it's the easiest way to talk about it in this, when we're, when we're speaking about such polarized ways of the, um, dealing with people. Thank so you. Understood that it's not your personal belief that everything is black and white, but that Within this, context, within this context, it's the easiest way to, to speak of it. So. Thank you. And actually, that is a harmful thought pattern that's perpetuated also is the black and white thinking, us versus them, mm -hmm. wrong versus right. And, um, you know, statistically, the, the youth suicide rates in Utah are off the charts. And the um, LGBTQ kids that are trying to deal with feeling that they are somehow flawed and wrong and irreparably, you know, they, sexual sin is the sin next to murder. This is what we, we were taught. And masturbation, which is like teenage boys. Mm -hmm. And from my, what I know from being a parent and, you know, they ha they need to and human beings need to have sexual expression mm -hmm. and they're killing themselves because 
they feel that they feel like they have to shut down and shut off their sexuality completely in order to be quote unquote worthy. Hmm. It split, it splits people apart. The antidepressant rate in, uh, in Utah is, is sky high. And I was, I was there. I was there. So I have a lot of compassion and a lot of understanding. And I do have some self judgment, I think for being unable to, see what I couldn't know enough to see, Mm. but I'm moving through that too. And And that's a super common thing for any form of manipulative abuse or narcissistic abuse. Anytime there's trauma bonding or Stockholm syndrome involved, people can't see what they don't see and they can't know what they don't know. And and then what comes after that is the shame and guilt. And um, that is, it's good that you're working through that because that's does, I don't know if it helps, but it's really common to experience that. Yeah. Yeah. It does. And it helps to have labels for things and, Mm -hmm. and a left brain kind of analytical. Mm -hmm. That is what has helped with my cognitive dissonance. Okay. So you were saying that the, um, that there was recently media exposure of sexual abuse within the hierarchy. Yes. They're toward female followers. So what is that looking like in the media? Are, are, is it being covered up or is it being exposed fully and there's charges and court cases going on? There are court cases going on both in the, uh, the, court, the court of the land and in the, within that construct, their own courts that, mm-hmm. that they hold. And I am not sure that the media coverage has been entirely accurate because of our own personal inherent bias or non-inherent bias that may have been taught to us. Um, So it has been hard for coverage, I believe, to be accurate and thorough. Mm -hmm. And there is a lot of uh, victim blaming. There there are a lot of people who are saying, why did she wait 30 years? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And my most recent answer to that has been, has been to flip it around and and think about what kind of trauma has to be processed for 30 years. It's not like it happened and she walked away and and woke up one day and went, oh, I think I'm going to, you know, take care of that thing that happened 30 years ago. My experience is that trauma we live with every single day and every Mm -hmm. single night. Well, and also who would have believed her? Exactly. He's a man in a suit in authority and she right. is a, a, a mere woman and a very young one and impressionable. And she had most likely just gone through the, um, the rituals that require the oath of silence at that time. Right. Maybe, maybe in shock. I believe that I was actually in quite a degree of shock and maybe mm-hmm. even altered reality when I went through that. Mm-hmm. And so f- watching it from the outside, what's that like as you watch, especially this case, because in this particular case, I mean, it is, it's her, her experience is different from yours, but it has a very similar, has a similar tone to it where, you know, she couldn't come out, she couldn't um, tell her story and she couldn't get any resolution for the abuse she suffered. And even now, as you said, the media may or may not be covering it accurately. Yes. Which, which means her story is still being buried. Um, so yes. what, what is that like for you from watching from the outside? And, and, and they are still attempting to silence her. Mm-hmm. And she, she has been trying in different ways over the past three decades, 30 years to be heard, to be seen, to be able to heal and, and uh, let, you know, for, to allow her voice to be heard. Uh, most recently, she stepped into this man's local congregation meeting and stood up front at the, uh, their version of open mic <laughs> and said, uh, by the way, there is a a sexual predator sitting right there in full fellowship. And uh, the men, the men went up front and put hands on this woman who was speaking about her trauma that she had experienced 
by a man putting his hands unwanted on her. And she stood firm. She didn't deck anybody, which I, I really admire that degree of self-control. There were two men that had their hands on her and, and silenced her and moved her away from the pulpit when she was speaking. And a lot of people, you know, on, on both sides of it, on social media are saying things like, well, that wasn't the proper time and place and she shouldn't have commandeered their church meeting. And, you know, failing to recognize that she is exposing a sexual predator sitting next to their families and children. Right. And there is no and proper time and place for that. There is only no. when, you're, when you have the strength to do it as a survivor and, and when you feel it'll have the most impact. And it may have been a, a Hail Mary. She's been working on this for so long. And the way that I understand it, and forgive me if I don't have the facts completely correct, but I believe that a federal judge dismissed part of her lawsuit, but part of it is continuing. And the and like there is focus on, well, you know, he threw out such and such, so it must not be true. Again, burying it, like you said, and silencing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, go stand up there in front. Go stand up there in front. You know, I had a, watching it back to the watching it from here, I had a, a physical um, reaction to the video of her being, her, her standing up and speaking, you know, and the, the bravery of that. And then those men closing in on her with their hands on her was, was very uh, resonant with anger for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's, it's a physical symbol of exactly what they are doing emotionally to people and what, what abusers yes. and narcissists do to people as well. Yes. Um, the silencing, the stopping, it's, it's a physical form of gaslighting in a sense, you know, to completely yeah. take her experience and negate it in publicly. And the, uh, the immediate call, mm -hmm. like the immediate uh, war cry is crazy, crazy woman, crazy woman, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is, I think the go-to when someone is speaking their truth that is, hasn't been heard and, you know, got to up the ante a little bit. Well, that's the nature of a smear campaign, isn't it? To convince the world that the other person's crazy so that yeah. you can go on with whatever it is you're doing, right? And get away with it. Yep. I went through that. I went through that for years with a custody battle and I did not win. It was a, a smear campaign and it was character assassination and um, scapegoating, and I had, I did not even know those words. I just knew that it was killing me, but I had to keep going, you know. Right, <laughs> and right. the after effects of it, it doesn't end unless people consciously make the choice to stop doing that and do something different instead. It mm -hmm. keeps going. Fade away into obscurity, make a change, or let it keep going. That's, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. even. As far, far as my own story, you know, I can, I can see all of these things resonate through all the different aspects of, of my life looking over the past, you know, few decades. Right. And that's what I was, I was wondering, you know, how it, how it feels as you watch this um, and what it's bringing up uh, for you. And I think it, yeah, go ahead. So it's helping, it's helping bring clarity and it is helping, as I mentioned before, with the uh, executive function mm -hmm. of my brain, because I can observe it from a little bit of a distance instead of being in it. Mm -hmm. Even though sometimes watching um, some of the things that some of the things that are available to watch that align with my past experience, it can set right back into it, but I can see it so that I'm not in it now, which right. is right. It's like a separate perspective, a different perspective or, or a, a larger frame to put the problem into a larger picture frame to put the picture of what happened into. So that there's room. Yeah. Does that makes sense. And, yeah. And it gives labels. You've written down what it's bringing up for you, right? Is that what I'm seeing? Yes. It's a lot. It's a lot of dot connecting with mm -hmm. the uh, corporation at the, 
at the center as the ultimate authority and external locus of control mm -hmm. as part of the narcissistic paradigm as I see it. And it spider webs out into so many dysfunctions. Inherent, can go ahead and name a few of what you're of what you're reading there. Uh, inherent guilt for living, for being human, mm -hmm. for having needs and desires. Um, family dysfunction and separation. Families are destroyed. Familial alienation, alienation, and even though my youngest child has never been part of that particular paradigm, mm -hmm. the patterns, unfortunately can unseen can be perpetuated by the quote unquote victim. Mm -hmm. So even though I removed my, my physical self and mostly my mental self, there were still patterns and paradigms that have taken a lot of work to try and turn around. Mm -hmm. And I have, you know, relationships with my children that could, possibly be permanently damaged familial alienation mm -hmm. there's trauma that is lifelong impact and the over uh overriding feeling of what's wrong with me what's wrong with me gaslighting cognitive dissonance um always never good enough self-loathing mm -hmm. smear campaign character assassination prescriptions psychologists counselors what's wrong with me Mm -hmm. you know, spinning on that hamster wheel of crazy. The self is, is destroyed. The self is eroded. There can be very, very little self left. There's a, there's a paranoia mm -hmm. um, because, you know, God is always watching and Santa knows what you're doing at all times. The locus of control is, is exterior. There is no internal guide because that has been, uh, steamrolled and ignored so many times that the poor little thing is too weak to raise its head anymore. Mm -hmm. There's the, the misogyny um, aided by the quote unquote priesthood, which is supposedly divine, re divinely restored. Um, and what was taught to my sons is that now that they hold those keys and that power, they have more power in their little pinky finger than their mother does in her whole body. There's hyper focus on sexualization as demonization. It's almost like overkill, like, like oh, sexual, 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 but it's so repressed that, that it comes out in unhealthy ways. And, and then things that are completely normal and natural mm -hmm. are demonized to the point uh, as I said, of, of suicide, the, the shame and guilt mm -hmm. is absolutely unbearable as a human being. And then I think the most tragic is the adulterated meaning of love. So all of this, as you're hearing these stories coming out in the media, are, there just, are you finding any resolve at all in having this exposure happening publicly? So much. Yeah. So very, very much. And, and, you know, I, I'm really glad I stuck around for this. Yeah. I'm glad that I did that. I, you know, I'm ready to own and claim my uh, survivorship mm -hmm. and it has been pointed out to me that there are specific tactics that are used called psyops that I have been the lucky recipient of, which gives me even more in, in, in my mind, it speaks to my own resilience. And again, this is not just me mm -hmm. and not all of us make it. Right. And you can hear from the list that you gave, if the woman who is exposing her truth publicly and, and you know, making these very bold and very brave attempts to have her story told, you can hear just from your list, that's your list, but you know that at least a portion of that list is her list. Exactly. That she's standing up there with this list inside of her potentially and her own version of it. Um, but those are all, everything you said, I mean, I'm in my head naming them as different survivor issues. You know, I'm, I'm hearing them individually as I do any form of any person who's been with a narcissist or who has had narcissistic parents or anything 
where they've had a narcissist or a toxic abuser in their life. I'm hearing your list as, you know, also as really big picture of a lot of different people. And then I think back to her story and think, wow, that really takes a lot to stand there and be in the face knowing you're going to be smeared, knowing no one's going to believe you, but also that you have a core group of people probably that do believe you or else how could you do that, right? She must have, mm -hmm. she must have people believing in her. I would hope. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. She does. And, and the movement um, also toward protecting the children mm -hmm. is, is huge right now. Right, right. I mean, we only talked about the one story, but you're right. There's, just, there's several, mm -hmm. several different stories going on. Um, Emerging all the time. New ones popping up everywhere. Hopefully for people who have experienced this or experienced it within a different organization or experienced it on, in a different way, hearing that there are people who believe and there are people who are out there trying to make change and stand up against this, you know, that the narcissism in society. Yes. On a larger level of being acceptable. Exactly. And the, the, that also attaches to the grooming of children, mm -hmm. uh, wide scale perpetuated and it, the grooming of children to not know that it is not okay for an adult to be asking them questions of a sexual sexual nature mm -hmm. and that even like the parents authority is usurped by the organization the parents bow to what the organization says is best for their children it keeps adults perpetually children the big picture of it, looking at it, looking at what's, what's happening, you know, on a larger scale has provided a unique opportunity for dot connecting these things that I, that I've shared are, that was just the beginning. That was what I've written down is just, that's just what came tumbling out of my brain in that mm, of course, you know, right. five yeah. or seven minutes. It is, there's so much more mm -hmm. and, it is not just a list of words like you were saying. These are actual things with definitions and backgrounds and effects. And when they're working together, you, you know, a person can start exhibiting crazy behaviors. Right. And then point at the victim and call the victim crazy. Well, all and it takes is one time being told you're doing something you didn't do or that what you're doing is not, in fact, what you're doing. All it takes, anyone... I think can relate to that on a very minute level. All it takes is once and you feel crazy, you feel angry, you feel reactive. And then when you react based on the reactive feeling, of course it looks crazy. So, and then the more that that happens, the crazier a person right. feels and the more out of touch with one's own truth and reality, because there has been an assigned reality. Right. You're, you're arguing about the wrong thing. Then you're just, you're, you're defending your sanity rather than talking about the issue at hand. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's the nature of gaslighting. That's why it is so effective. Yeah. Yeah. It really works. It works really well. <laughs> Terrible. I know it's, it's horrible. Yeah. I'm hoping that with this exposure that's going on and this is only one, one place, one story that we're talking about or a few stories, but this is, that with this exposure going on, that our society can begin to wake up to what's going on. It's not just this. Like you said, this is us. And by us, it's everyone who's ever suffered at the hands of a narcissist and anyone who's ever suffered at a community. I mean, we all are under the influence of the society we live in. And I'm hoping that as people become more aware that changes can be made, to be less accepting of the type of manipulation and more understanding of people's actual truths. Thank you. I, that brings to mind the idea of uh, not uh, my own distaste for the us versus them paradigm. I have, um, you know, of course, my own perspective and view on the, the narcissist. There are many people who would demonize and call them inhuman, them inhuman. And I can see <laughs> in my world of my creation, um, I see it as more of an illness that will consume people if it is not addressed. 
On a society level, absolutely, because, I mean, this comes to how to end it or how to change it. And I think partially it is the, the not accepting it as a normal. Yes. Not accepting it as power, not accepting it as something that is powerful and um, desirable to have around you, and to teaching children empathy and teaching children um, to going it toward the very young children and, and showing them that other people feel too and other people have experiences too instead of showing them showing them this narcissistic path. Yes, and I believe also uh, teaching good boundaries, mm -hmm. healthy interactions, and that yes, I can say no, and that is fine. It mm -hmm. is, I, can, I own my body, I inhabit my body, I, my reality is valid. Mm -hmm. However, as children, we, are, we, we protect ourselves so that we can survive. But I think that that's part of the healing is shifting what is normal, what we accept as normal. Exactly. Yeah. And thank you so very much for the work that you do. I cannot, I often stumble over having the right words for where I was and mm -hmm. where I am. My, uh, you know, the gratitude for that is exponential. And I hope that the healing is also exponential just keeps Much going. Just, it just keeps going. You just get to keep going. That's the, the beauty of it. You just get to keep going and you get to start thriving. And that's, I think, ever evolving and ever changing toward a more positive self is not a bad plan. It's, right? not, a bad, it's not a bad way to see the, see the rest of your life. You know, if people feel like healing um, is something they're suffering through, but at a certain point, it can become something you are moving beyond and you just keep going so it does and the hope that there that it can get better and that it does get better mm -hmm. because so, so many days it, you know i would hear or tell myself it'll be better tomorrow it'll be better tomorrow it'll be better mm -hmm. and it was not and that can be quite devastating on an internal level mm -hmm. but i do believe we're on our path and contrast begets clarity. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. It was good talking to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Take care. And thank you for watching. Again, my name is Lise Colucci. Information about me, about coaching or group coaching can be found in the comments below. Hit subscribe and see you next time.